The Italian army is at the threshold of one of the most significant transformations in its modern history. For nearly three decades, its armored forces relied on the C-1RE-8, a tank designed during the waning years of the Cold War and introduced in the 1990s. At the time, RE-8 was a proud achievement of Italy's defense industry, representing a degree of autonomy in an area traditionally dominated by larger European producers. Yet in today's rapidly evolving security environment, the RE-8 has become an artifact of another era, one that no longer meets the demands of contemporary warfare. The shortcomings of the RE-8 are not merely theoretical. Its armor protection, firepower, and mobility are inadequate by current standards, particularly when measured against the brutal lessons drawn from the war in Ukraine. There, both outdated Soviet-era vehicles and older NATO standard tanks have suffered heavy losses to drones, precision artillery, and advanced anti-tank guided missiles. These conflicts have highlighted how vulnerable legacy platforms can be in a battle space shaped by new technologies and integrated systems. Italy, often viewed as a Mediterranean power with limited heavy armor capacity, recognized that continuing with the RE-8 would leave it increasingly marginalized in the collective defense posture of NATO. This realization led Rome to commit to a generational leap forward, embodied in the decision to adopt the KF-51 Panther. Developed by Germany's rain metal, the Panther is being brought into Italy through a strategic partnership with Leonardo, ensuring that Italy plays a direct role in its production. The Panther is not simply a replacement for the RE-8 but rather a reimagining of what a main battle tank should be in the 21st century. Its design philosophy emphasizes connectivity, survivability, and lethality in equal measure. At the heart of the Panther is its 130mm smoothbore gun, a weapon that delivers roughly 50% more kinetic energy than NATO's traditional 120mm cannons. This increased firepower is paired with an autoloader that both reduces crew size and allows for faster rates of fire, enhancing operational efficiency in high-intensity combat. Protection has also taken a decisive step forward. The tank employs a modular armor package combined with an advanced active protection system capable of intercepting incoming threats, a stark contrast to the passive composite armor of the RE-8. In addition, the Panther incorporates a fully digital 360-degree sensor suite and a battle management system designed to integrate seamlessly with unmanned aerial and ground systems, making it a platform built for network-centric warfare. What distinguishes Italy's approach is the insistence on domestic involvement. Out of the first 132 Panthers planned, 82 will be produced in Italy and equipped with the home-built 120mm L-55 gun, while the remaining vehicles will carry Rainmetal's more powerful 130mm system. This arrangement ensures that Italy is not merely a customer but an active industrial partner, preserving sovereign capabilities and safeguarding jobs. Production will be centered in La Spezia, with about 60% of manufacturing taking place on Italian soil. This commitment is expected to generate thousands of jobs, sustain high-value skills, and provide Rome with an opportunity to become a potential export hub for the KF-51 to other markets in the Mediterranean, Middle East, and Balkans. The Panther program is also accompanied by the planned acquisition of around 1,000 KF-41 infantry fighting vehicles. Together, these platforms will give Italy the ability to field fully mechanized heavy brigades, a significant departure from its long-standing reputation as a force oriented primarily toward peacekeeping and stabilization missions. For decades, Italian ground forces were often dismissed as second-tier when compared with the more heavily equipped armies of Germany or France. By 2035, this perception is likely to be outdated. With Panthers and KF-41s, Italy will be able to deploy heavy formations capable of operating alongside the most advanced European and American units on NATO's Eastern Front, an area of increasing strategic concern. This modernization also carries important implications for the alliance as a whole. Eastern NATO members, particularly the Baltic states, have long voiced frustration that the southern flank has not contributed sufficiently to the alliance's deterrence posture against Russia. 
Italy's investment in heavy armor directly addresses this imbalance, signaling both solidarity and seriousness. It gives NATO more flexibility in deploying credible armored forces to its northeastern flank while simultaneously elevating Italy's role within the alliance's broader strategic architecture. Beyond the military dimension, the Panther Project is a substantial industrial and economic undertaking. Estimated at more than 10 billion euros over 15 years, it is a long-term investment not only in equipment but in industrial capability and sovereignty. The creation of Leonardo Rainmetal Military Vehicles, a 50-50 joint venture, ensures that critical expertise will be retained in Italy. This has the potential to establish Rome as a significant player in Europe's fragmented defense market and as a reliable supplier for allied states. The program is also expected to drive innovation, generate high-skilled employment, and enhance Italy's export potential in the competitive global arms market. Nevertheless, the challenges are considerable. The KF-51 Panther remains largely a paper tank, with no operational track record. As the first adopter, Italy accepts the risks of delays, cost overruns, and possible compatibility issues with existing NATO standards. Financially, the program is demanding, coming at a time when Rome faces persistent debt pressures and social spending demands at home. Critics argue that such an emphasis on heavy armor could come at the expense of other priorities, including drone warfare, long-range precision fires, and integrated air defense systems, all of which have proven decisive in recent conflicts. The competitive landscape in Europe adds another layer of complexity. Germany continues to push the Leopard 2A8, France is upgrading the Leclerc to the XLR standard while pursuing the future MGCS project, and Poland is investing heavily in both the K2 Black Panther and the Abrams. Italy must therefore demonstrate not only that the KF-51 is technologically viable but also that it represents a strategically irreplaceable capability within NATO. Failure to do so could leave Rome with an expensive system that struggles to find its place in Europe's crowded armored ecosystem. Yet the potential rewards are substantial. If Italy manages to bring the Panther into service successfully, it will elevate its ground forces into the top tier of European militaries. No longer confined to the image of a Mediterranean peacekeeper, Rome would emerge as a credible contributor to high-intensity land warfare. This transformation reflects not only a generational investment in technology and industry but also a strategic statement of intent. Italy is signaling that the age of the RE8 has ended and a new era of heavy armor is beginning. Analyses of this kind require significant time, research, and dedication. If you find this type of work valuable, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing, activating notifications, and sharing your thoughts in the comments. Your engagement helps strengthen our community and ensures that we can continue providing timely, thoughtful coverage of the defense and security challenges that are shaping our world.